In this video, I will explain how to create basic charts in R's ggplot2 package and methods used to refine the charts to remove the non-data elements. ggplot2 is based on the grammar of graphics. The idea is that you can build every graph from the same few components, a data set and a set of geoms, which are visual marks that represent the data points. Here are a few examples. Let's begin by looking at single variable data graphics. Density plots. A density plot visualizes the distribution of data over a continuous interval or time period. This chart is basically a variation of a histogram that uses kernel smoothing to plot values that allows for smoother distributions by smoothing out the noise. The peaks of the density plot help display where values are concentrated over the interval. To create a density plot, here is the following syntax. If we apply this syntax to a real example using the bike sharing data, you see that we'd be plotting a single variable, x equals rentals, and defining our chart type as geome underscore density. If we plot this, we get a plot that looks like what's displayed on the screen. We can begin refining this plot following a series of steps. First, we want to add labels such as the title, subtitle, y-axis label, x-axis label, and a caption. We can do this by adding the labs parameter where we define those elements. Next, we can add a fill. We define the fill color and the fill background color by using a parameter called fill and color. Here I've defined both those, the outline of the fill and the fill itself as the same color. This color is a hexadecimal value. Next, we can apply a basic theme to remove the shading. Here, we've just used the theme underscore BW. Next, we can customize the font. Here, I've chose the font fat family Avenir. Now we can remove the chart chunk. Here's the syntax for removing the panel border, the major grid lines, the minor grid lines, the axis lines, changing those to gray, and removing the axis ticks for both X and Y. You notice that we can set the elements to element underscore blank or we can select the color. Next, we can format the scale. Specifically, we want to format the y at the x-axis scale to include a comma for our values. Finally, we can refine our chart by adding what's called a pre-attentive attribute, where we want to draw our viewer's attention. Here, we can use geom underscore v line to pass in a value to be plotted vertically on the x axis. That is the mean for bike share rentals. We can set the size, the color, and the line type. Here, the size is set to a thickness of one. The color is a hexadecimal code for gray, and the 
line type is dashed. Histograms. Histogram visualizes the distribution of data over a continuous interval or certain time period. Each bar in the histogram represents the tabulated frequency at each interval or bin. Essentially, the total area of the histogram is equal to the number of data. Here's a syntax for generating a histogram. The example here shows the bike share data passing in again a single variable and then using the geom underscore histogram as our chart type. Out of the box, this is what we get. We have the opportunity to set the bin width and we can do this by using a parameter in the geom underscore histogram method called bin width. Bins are essentially the range of values that is, we divide the entire range of values into a series of intervals, and then we count how many values fall into each interval. The bins are usually specified as consecutive, non-overlapping intervals of a variable. We can add labels to our chart, just as we did with the density plot. Labels again include the title, subtitle, y-axis, x-axis labels, and a caption. We typically use the caption label to note our source, to attribute our source, and also to give ourselves credit for creating the chart. We could fill our histogram, and here I've set a parameter called fill within the geome underscore histogram method to chart color. Instead of specifying the actual value, I use a variable to that I assign the value, the hexadecimal value for this green color, as shown here. This allows me to reuse chart color in all of my charts. And if I decide to change from this green color to, say, a purple, um, I can change it in one place, and then my charts will be updated next time I execute my code. Again, here's the example of using that chart color variable. I then can apply a theme, remove the chart junk, and change the font. And I do this by, again, referencing a variable that I created called my chart attributes. This essentially uh, contains these particular method calls. My theme, black and white, setting my text, to Avenir, sending the panel border element to blank, the panel grid major and minor grid lines to blank, changing the axis line color to gray, and removing the tick marks completely. Next, I can format my scales. Again, here I want to format my y-axis scale excuse me, my x-axis scale for rentals to include commas. Let's move on to two variable data graphics. We'll begin with the bar chart. Bar chart uses either horizontal or vertical bars to show discrete numerical comparisons across categories. One of the axes of the chart shows the specific categories being compared, and the other axis represents the discrete value scale. Here's a syntax for a basic bar plot. We pass in our data, and this time we're using two variables, x and y. We select the chart type of geom underscore bar, and we have to pass in a required parameter, stat equals identity. Out of the box, this is what our basic bar plot looks like. So you notice that there's a lot of chart junk still needs to be removed. And we can do that in the same way that we removed the chart junk and, and formatted the text and the scales as we did 
in the density plot and the histogram. Coming up with the final visualization. Let's move on to box plots. A box plot is a convenient way to visually display groups of numerical data for you to form tiles. The syntax for a box plot for a two variable display would include an X and a Y. Our X variable here might be something like month and our Y variable here might be rentals, meaning that we would have a single box plot for each month based on the Y variable. Then we choose our chart type, which here would be geom box plot. Out of the box, this is what we get. You'll notice that I'm using the bike share data set, but I've subsetted it using a data frame called bike share underscore 2011. It's just a subset of the 2011 data because I want to look at just the 12 months for 2011. I pass in my month as my X variable and Y as my as rentals for my Y variable. Variable. Here's the final box plot once I apply the aesthetic parameters. I can certainly format my y axis in this case to add commas as well. Let's move on to line graphs. Line graphs are used to display quantitative value over a continuous interval or time span. Usually we use these to show trends or relationships. They also help give us the big picture over an interval to see how it's developed over a period of time. The syntax is quite simple. We pass in our data, we assign our two variables, our x and our y. We have a required parameter called group equals one. This is for a single time series. If we had a multiple time series, we would append or modify the group to reference a color perhaps for each particular series. And then we use the chart type geom underscore line. Out of the box, this is what we get. And here I'm using the, I'm showing you the 2012 data from the bike sharing data set. For X, I plot my date, which is actually the day, and Y is the number of rentals for that day. I use my required parameter group one and define my chart type as geom underscore line. Here's the final visualization. Here, I've not only used geom underscore line, but I've used geom underscore point to actually plot the individual days as points and then connect those points with a line. Next, Let's create an area chart. Area charts are basically line graphs, but with the area below the line filled with a certain color. These are used most commonly to show trends rather than convey specific values. Here's the basic syntax. It's very similar to a line chart except that we choose the chart type geom underscore area. Again, out of the box, this is what we get when we're plotting a single year of data as an area graph. We can take the time to remove the chart junk and create a visualization that looks much more refined as shown here. We can also look at this in comparison to a line graph and see how an area graph is basically a line graph. Now it's your turn. I challenge you to create some beautiful displays using what you've learned in this video. I would encourage you to create your own aesthetic for defining your font, for defining the look and color of your visualization, but most importantly, ensure that what you're visualizing makes sense and has a key message.